Hello, since many of you are not using Windows and thus cannot use Atmel Studio for programming the microcontroller unless Atmel Studio works in a virtual environment under macOS, which I'm not sure whether it does or not, uh, then we have to look for different options. So Atmel Studio by itself is a Windows application and you can find it on Microchip's homepage. Here are the two options for Windows installer, either complete installer or a installer which will load everything afterwards. An other option which has been established during the past years in order to program different families of microcontrollers is Platform IO, which is an open source initiative. And it is a plug-in for the Microsoft Visual Studio Code platform or editor. And uh, this one is available for both Macos and Linux as well. So if you have installed Visual Studio Code, which you can find on the visualstudio.com homepage, or you just Google for VS Code, for example, then you can start the program. If you find it, we have it here, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code. And it will look like this. Um, it's still doing something. Okay, it's done doing something. And you have, let me take it away here. You have this icon here, which is extensions. If we click here, then you can actually enter up here platform IO. And if you spell it correctly, not like me, platform IO, then you will actually find a couple of options here, but it's actually the first one here, the platform IO IDE, which we want. So you can either click install directly here or you click here to get more information. And then we choose install. And uh, this might take a while, so don't be impatient as I was before. Um, just wait until it says that everything is done on here. Obviously, it downloads first its own Python interpreter, and then it's, it installs a lot of core utilities, which it needs to compile for different embedded platforms. And actually, here you have a... Uh, list of different platforms which it actually supports. Um, it is mostly based around ready-made embedded boards like the Arduino or the Nucleo from STM. But this can be simply ignored for us because we have just the, the simple microcontroller which we want to program. Um, and it also yeah, it supports uh, C and C++ as its programming languages for, for the task. And if I see a screenshot like this, I just get frightened because I don't know why you want to see everything like this on one single page. Um, so don't be frightened yourself. And uh, it's still not done down here. I will also try to find out how I actually can increase the font size later on because I want to stream this out as well to you later. So Platform IO has been successfully installed. Please reload window. Actually, I tried this one before and I will try something completely different. This time I will just restart the whole Visual Studio code. It seems to be to me a much more safe option. So Let's restart everything here. And while it's starting up, it gives us a new icon down here on the left toolbar. And this is actually the icon of Platform IO. It also starts automatically up with the PIO homepage. And here we can now choose a new project. And let's try that. And it will tell you that there are what, 909 different boards available. Let's first call this something. Let's call this project test and select a board. And uh, the problem here is that it is many boards. And uh, of course, our microcontroller board is not here. But what you can find is the SparkFun 
up, up, up. No, not this one. The Spark Fun Pro Micro 3.3 volts, 8 megahertz. This is the closest we can get, and we choose this one for now. And it gives you an Arduino framework as a preferred framework for programming. And so we say finish, and now it also has to do something. It will load a lot of stuff um, in the background. I'm not sure how much, but it says, please wait here. So we wait. Okay. It restarted itself somehow. I'm not sure complete why, but um, it has now actually, if you would have a look in your home directory under Windows now, um, then you will actually see um, users VC uh, platform IO that it has created a structure platform IO here which it contains I don't know how many how much 400 megabytes of files um, on my computer here which is all the definitions of different platforms and and yeah so what we can do now is actually create a new project and let's do this we uh, create a new project which we Oh, we, we created a new project. We already created a new project test, of course. That's how we got here in the first place. And uh, this is what you see here in the Explorer bar on the left-hand side, where you can see um, different hidden subdirectories and some include lib source test and uh, something. Down here, we have something which is called the platform io.ini. If you click on this, you actually see the ini, the initialization file of our project. And what we will do here is actually we remove the framework Arduino line from it. I am currently trying to investigate how we can actually make something where we don't get this line in the first hand. But for now, you have to remove it. And uh, then we go to source and it actually under source SRC created for you already a main file, which will be the file which it compiles. And this is actually uh, an Arduino sketch essentially. So we will also delete all of this. What we will instead do is create a simple C, C++ file. We will, I, I will not change the ending from CPP to C now. It doesn't matter. Um, but I want to include, and here you see the syntax highlighting um, of uh, the editor, which is really nice. We include, we just choose what it suggests. And we want from the, from the AVR, block of libraries, we want to include the io.h library. So you see that it, it just suggests what, what its reasonable choices for us. And so we can just choose from there. I want to include a different library as well. I want to include a library which is called, uh, which is uh, called uh, util delay.h which allows us to use time delays in our code. And then we start by writing our code. We want to have a main function, um, as we have seen in the third lecture in the course, and it accepts no arguments. So the parenthesis here is filled with void, which means empty, and it will return an int value, an integer value, but it will never do because our int main will never end. And uh, so I start by making the two parentheses here. And now I can do some commands for our microcontroller. And just to test if anything is working, we will look into the details what these do later on. DDRE, I will set so DDRE seems to be a variable, it is a variable, but it's a variable which is already defined by the compiler. 
actually by the library io.h for us and it's something in the hardware of the microcontroller. So I will choose to set it to 0B0100000. And then I will make a while loop. I just type WH and it suggests a couple of um, continuations for that. And if we just click, then we get a ready-made while loop with all the parentheses and indentation and everything what we want. Our condition should be one because it should never end. And then I want to blink the LED on the pin PE6. I can do this by actually saying port E, which is another variable, should be the same 0B01000000. Then I wait and a command for this is underscore delay milliseconds. So I press an underscore and a small d and we have four suggestions which fit. We take the delay milliseconds and it takes an argument which is actually the time in milliseconds as you can see by the uh, help here which plots up automatically. So let's say we blink it for 200 milliseconds. Then we say port E should be 0, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I also could have written it in hex or decimal. And then I want to wait for, let's say, 800 milliseconds. So this is code, which is um, correct code. We will not, you don't need to understand right now what it does in detail. Um, but now we want to compile this code. And here I'm really not completely satisfied, but perhaps I will get used to this as well. Um, the compile is done through buttons on the bottom row on the screen here. So we have this one here, this check mark, which is platform IO build. Then we have platform IO upload, which also not really works for me right now. And we have clean and we have serial monitor, which we will later use and we can open a terminal. But once, what we want to do now is to build our code and I press build here. And uh, it's building. And we can actually see, and this is good, this is unlike Arduino, for example, you get detailed information during the build process here and you get a summary at the end. It says that of the flash memory, 0.9% or 246 bytes will be used for our program, which is quite little. And uh, actually I can, I, I will try to upload this code now. And for this, I will use, if I do this. So first we have to find our code and on Windows, again now um, the we can have a look where it is it actually is under your documents folder in a folder platform io projects test the name of the project and then we have the same structure that we actually see here in the explorer window in visual studio code so under dot pio you will find a build the result of a build process and then you will, fill the, will find the name of our platform and in here you will find a hex file which is actually the file which we want to upload um, let me just show you how this file looks uh, more apps here i'll open it in just notepad and uh, so this is how this file looks um, it's a lot of hexadecimal numbers that's why it's called a hex file. So this is a file we want to upload. And uh, I will be using my uh, trusted Avia Dudes uploader here, but I will also show you other options later on how to do this on a different platform, like just from the command line. Uh, I have to find uh, the file. We go to project, we go to test, we go to .po, build, spark fun, here it is. And uh, now I actually have to put the microcontroller into uh, 
into upload mode. I would have to disk two here. Oh, it's completely out of focus. Well, it tries to focus. Let's go there. Clean, clean up the working area a bit. It's completely out of focus. I hope I, I will. I hope that it will focus in a second. So what I have to do now in order to upload the code, there is already something blinking this LED right now. I'll have to put uh, the bootloader into reset mode so it actually accepts a new program and i do this by double clicking on the button which we have on the breaker board here double click now we have a fading led um, switching back here i can now say program and it said it didn't manage because actually it timed out before i managed to switch over so i will do it again i press i double click on the platform and do a program here and now it says something like it's burning and it has programmed 246 bytes of flash um, which is actually the same number that it should program and if i go over here now we have it blinking again and we have it blinking according to the new sketch 200 milliseconds the led is on and then uh, for 800 milliseconds it's off on off on off on off so just to show you that this is really the code we, or the thing which happened i can go back and change the times and let's say i blink it for two seconds on and two seconds off just to make a clear difference here I will compile the code and it's still 246 bytes. All we changed is the length of the delay. I will bring up Aviadudes here. I will now transition and show you my desk here permanently. So I will put the chip into reset mode. Now it is, and now we can actually program the new code. And when it's done, you will see that it actually now blinks at a much slower pace, two seconds on and two seconds off. So we managed to write code in Platform IO to compile it and to then upload it into the microcontroller using the USB cable. So that's it for now, how to get started in Platform.io.